Really just our story and how we've developed Lodestar over the past three years. So about us, um, my name is Cayman. I work at Chainsafe. It is a great company. Um, we're hiring. We basically build blockchains. Uh, we have a whole bunch of layer one projects. Uh, Lodestar is one of them. But uh, if you are interested in getting into core development, we're a really great, great place, great culture. So Lodestar is it's one of these projects at, at Chainsafe. We're... we're um, we're basically an ETH2 or an Ethereum consensus ecosystem written entirely in TypeScript. Um, we really take the open source ethos to heart. Uh, we have all of our meetings, they're public. Everything we do is public, um, and we really encourage anyone who wants to contribute. We, we, we try to help people out and get, get people involved. Uh, a lot of our team members actually started, uh, started their work on the project through their open source contributions and it was kind of like a open source to contract to hire kind of a situation so uh, we really we really like that that kind of ethos uh, but what we're going to be talking about today is specifically our consensus client and how we got from like prototyping prototypical kind of code to something that's like production ready something that you can really rely on something that doesn't just blow up all the time so before I kind of step into our story, I just want to kind of do a very high level of what metrics are. Uh, this is, I'm not going to go too deep. If, if you really want to go, know more, you can like read the docs about these things. So um, metrics, in our case, we're using Prometheus. Um, Prometheus basically gives you the, uh, the tools to um, build time series data for specific elements that you want to track in your code. Uh, the kind of three main things that you're tr tracking is either a counter, a gauge, or a histogram. Uh, we can go, we'll go into kind of some examples of all of these things, but basically what you want to know about metrics are you have some value, something in your code that you're wanting to track, uh, and, you want, and Prometheus will kind of query, the, query your software over time, and you can get a sense over time of, of how things are changing, how things are, are moving. Um, then you use Grafana to visualize these metrics. Uh, so um, a picture is, is like a thousand words, so it's um, basically the difference between like looking at a bunch of logs and then looking at like pretty graphs that can show you, give you a little bit more insight, give you something at a higher level um, than just squinting. So our story, um, basically we, <laughs> we, we started um, with really bad, uh, <laughs> with not very much infrastructure, not very much a, a discipline in how we tackled um, me metrics or tackled like the data that we, we track. Um, and, and eventually we kind of, like o over time and like through a lot of pain and, and, and suffering, we, we kind of realized that metrics are the way to go. Metrics give you a, a insights that you'll, you'll never get just by looking at logs. So really metrics aggregate a bunch of information and give you um, the tools you need to make better decisions about uh, how you release your product, uh, what things to focus on, uh, like what, what are priorities, and they're also just really pretty, so they're cool. So uh, this is a picture from the early days of Lodestar uh, from the Interop lock-in in Muskoga in 2019. Here's our message. Yeah, we're stuck syncing in some P2P issues. <laughs> uh, we didn't really know what, what, what was going on, like why things are breaking. We were looking at logs, actually, on the other side of the screen here. You, you know, we look happy, but it's like, uh-oh, things are breaking. <laughs> Here's some, uh, um, some funny issues that we uh, had. You can see priority low adding Prometheus monitoring. We didn't even know what we were doing. Uh, um, yeah, out of memory, OOM, out of memory. It was just like plaguing a lot of our development. Throughout 2019 into 2020, uh, Lodestar was like very, very much like a prototype and we ran into the issues time and time again. Like we would have the same thing happen multiple times and we weren't like, like regressions that were happening and we weren't really like learning our lesson. Kind of the turning point was, you know, starting to take some time to, to really uh, to take the time to like build out these metrics and build out these dashboards. So uh, we had a contributor, I think I can save a new world, maybe with peace. Um, and so throughout 2021, we started going really hardcore into adding a bunch of, just add a, a bunch of metrics um, and taking time to think through what questions that we want to answer, um, what pieces of code are dark, where is 
our, you know, where are we spending time in, the, in, in our software? Where are we, where is a bunch of memory being spent? We, really kind of uncovering all of the complexity of this, this running software. I mean, blockchains are really complicated software. There's a whole bunch going on. And um, unless you're really tracking, tracking key pieces, you're, you're kind of be going blind. And now we're finally kind of at a point where um, we, for any new feature that we're adding, we ask for metrics. So it'd be very important to track the retry behavior, meaning add metrics for. So that brings me to metrics-driven development. Um, really, the, the, the kind of the key, the key thing that we've learned is that every large feature should be documented with metrics. So if you are adding, in the case of a retry mechanism, you're adding some new feature, you need to make sure that it's actually working. And the only way that you can, um, or maybe not the only way, but a really, the really great way of doing that is being able to show that visually. Um, being able to show, okay, my, our cache is now bounded. Let's see, let's see that in the metrics. Let's see how, it's, how that cache is growing over time. Or let's see how many times it's the retry mechanism is actually being activated. Um, those are the sorts of things that you really only look can, can find by, through, through these graphical methods, through, through these metrics. Um, you're going to have a really hard time looking at the logs for that. The other, great, the other thing about metrics-driven development is that any deployed software that you use, you need to be monitoring it very carefully for regressions. So look here, this is the process heap increasing over time. And this is a comment from Lion. For the last two days, the leak is clearly visible, an impact of 75 megabytes a day. Yeah, so that's going to be a problem if your blockchain is, if it's just increasing at 75 megabytes a day continuously, you're going to run out of memory. And these are the, this, we were able to catch this, this issue before we actually before we actually cut a release, so um, it makes your release process a lot, re release, release processes a lot better. Here's another, here's another uh, example of a regression. Uh, we deployed, deployed a version of our software and we saw the cache size grow. It's like, uh-oh, is that, is, that, is that a bug? Is, that a, is, is, is it okay? Well, we only actually caught it because we were tracking these things. Uh, you, you probably aren't even going to have a log that's going to show you your, your cache sizes, so unless you, you actually measure this, you're going to be blind. The other great thing about, the, about dashboards and about metrics is that um, it lets you correlate different, different pieces of the code to find out where the problem is. So here we have different, you can, you can see a bunch of different graphs kind of all at the same time and see, um, okay, something is affecting the event, the event loop lag. I can see at the same time the active number of handles is growing the number of requests is growing. So you can kind of, um, you know, kind of solve the mystery in, in, a, in, a, in a way that you're not going to be able to do in the, in the logs. Another great strategy uh, is, um, is using different versions of your running software. So running um, like a staging version of your software against a production version or against several recent versions and being able to overlay data on top of, on, on top of one another and being able to see, okay, well, it looks like our beta version is, ha, is using a whole bunch more memory than our unstable version. So you know, being able to kind of compare and contrast, um, it gives you the, the tools to do this. And so just, just kind of like drilling down to a few, a few, few tips. Um, these are very, very practical kind of tips. Don't abuse the histograms. So I said there's three different types of metrics. Um, yeah, just when in doubt, you use the simplest tool possible. Histograms are really only used if you're wanting to see the kind of the distribution of of, uh, of something, so like maybe like looking at like request timing, um, maybe you'll want to see like all right, certain requests are happening very very quickly, but then others are happening kind of longer. Um, so the classic mistake with histograms is um, is uh, using a label that's unbounded. So if you had a, a metric that was tracking something per peer ID on the network, uh, well, you might have thousands of peers with, and if you each new, each new peer is going to be using a new peer ID. It's going to blow the metrics up, and it's going to affect the performance of, of Prometheus. And you're not going to be able to run the queries that you want to run. Oh, so how do you know which metrics to add? So you know, I showed some of these pretty graphs and everything. Um, but you know, like in, your, in, your, in your software, how do you know what you want? What do you want to track? Um, so really what you want to do is um, think about questions that you couldn't ask otherwise. Um, so a really good example is the size of your internal caches. Another thing you can think about is like, if this feature or if this part of the code would degrade or explode in the, in the kind of bad case, 
that, that's, a, that's a prime candidate for, for adding metrics around it. Um, and then really just like at, keep asking questions. And then it's like, if you have the data to be able to answer the question, you're good. But otherwise, keep adding metrics until you can, until you can answer those questions. So some ex examples that we, we've kind of come across. How often are our streams being reset? How many peers do we have? These are the kinds of questions that, that, that the metrics can help. And so I'm going to show you just a, a live demo of, or a live uh, example of, of our dashboards and we can kind of run through some things. And if anyone has any questions about it while I'm going through it, we can, we can do that too. Okay, so this is, this is uh, our dashboard um, for our, our fleet of, of uh, beacon nodes and validators. Um, this is kind of the, the high level dashboard. Right now we're looking at an unstable node, but we can go to like stable, a stable version of Lodestar. So this is running uh, version 1.1, we're on the Gurley network, we're synced. It looks like it got restarted about a day ago. Some interesting things, I guess, you know, peer, peer count is looking good, all right, you know, there's nothing, everything looks stable there. Um, we track different types of peers, inbound, outbound, and uh, for us, we really care about um, the number of peers that we're gonna be receiving messages from kind of continuously, those are our gossip uh, peers. So the number of mesh peers on our core topics, staying about six or seven. It looks like we're co connected to a lot of Lighthouse nodes and a lot of Prism nodes. And there's another Lodestar out there. Let's drill into something a little, a little more detailed here. So one, thing, one, one area that we really struggled with and where we added like, a lot of metrics is um, in our gossip sub-implementation. We found through adding a few metrics that um, we weren't getting blocks on time and it turned out that we, we didn't have enough peers who were sending us these, um, who were sending us blocks and then we started asking questions. All right, well, why are they not sending us blocks? It turned out it was because our peer scoring was too low. All right, well, why, why was the score too low? Uh, well, it, was, it turned out it was because there was a specific part of the scoring that was, that was too low. And so we kind of, you know, you start asking questions and you can build up, um, you, build, you start building the answers to that. Okay, so what you're seeing here is kind of some of what I was talking about. Um, we have breaking out the score into different components, um, that, different parameters that are um, going into your kind of aggregated score for peers. Um, what we were seeing before is, you know, you'd see a graph where the values are like going down and down and down over time, or they're like neg very negative numbers. Another really useful metric that we, were, that we check a lot is um, things related to the VM, so memory, CPU, um, and disk storage. So looks like our memory is st stable, that's great. Um, GC is only taking roughly seven and a half percent. This is, things are looking good. Yeah, I think that's enough of a, that's enough of a demo here. So um, at this point, um, open to questions and we're also hiring. So if any of this looks cool or interesting, and you know TypeScript. Hello, and thank you for the talk. Um, so I see that you have a ton of metrics, and I, I believe that most of them are useful. But um, do you have some kind of an alerting system uh, for you to be able to know when a metric has gone wrong? Because I think it's just unfeasible to go through each of them like daily or something like that. You, you, I think you need some automated way to, to alert you that something is going wrong. Yeah, absolutely. So that was something I didn't touch on, but um, it definitely feeds in. Um, so we we use uh, PagerDuty. You can um, you can basically set up um, thresholds for certain metrics that trigger um, either Slack notifications or Discord notifications, or in the case of a critical kind of issue, it'll call you or text you. Uh, yeah, we do have that set up. And I would definitely recommend that if you are in running something in production. Uh, thank you. Um, again, there, there are lots of metrics. Do you, did you guys um, develop over time um, a way to, or you know, kind of a mental model or framework to decide how to, where to put them whenever you have new, um, you know, graph or metric 
instead of, or do you just like decide to put it somewhere and then go back and like, you know, to make it easy to, to read or to uh, browse the, the dashboard? I don't know if that makes sense. Is the question about organizing the? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, I think probably have to grow it organically. What we did is we, we started with one dashboard that grew and grew and grew, and eventually it became kind of unsustainable to have everything just piled together, so we, we started breaking it apart. Um, the other thing that, the other kind of issue that we had initially is we would create a bunch of metrics, but we wouldn't add them to the dashboard. So there was no actual like visual cue for, for, for a lot of it, and so it kind of just went un, um, unnoticed. And so one thing we would, we would definitely recommend would be like, if you add a metric, also add it to the dashboard at the same time. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question about uh, storage. So again, too much metrics, Prometheus, or what? Does it affect the, the storage? Um, well, so uh, some of it kind of depends on your architecture um, of how you're deploying this. So um, what we do is we actually have one uh, Prometheus and Grafana server servicing all our entire fleet of of uh, beacon nodes. So, you know, we have a, a bunch of different machines and then we have one, one machine for these uh, right to, to uh, things. So it, it, it doesn't cut into the, to the uh, storage. We retain for a, a month. Quick question, uh, is, are the metrics relevant for like other EVM chains besides Ethereum mainnet? Um, or is it just like specific to Ethereum mainnet? So, yeah, a good question. Um, so I'd say like, I don't know if it's a half and half, but like half the metrics are like more like for like monitoring uh, the chain, something like a like a block explorer kind of kind of thing. Um, but I would say like a, a lot of the metrics are specific to the implementation. So and those are the ones that are I think probably more helpful. Um, just the internal caches and like timing timings of things that we're really really wanting to get right. Hi, uh, I wanted to know if you think these metrics are useful for other clients and not just the TypeScript one. And if so, would you maybe consider like, you know, putting them in the public domain so like anybody can see them and apply that to new clients they might be considering building? Right, I know that um, other clients do have metrics and I, I think like the ones that are more user focused, uh, those are the ones that look more like a, a block explorer and with maybe with some like validator, like showing your balance ticking up over time. Uh, and I think those are, those are public, and, I, and there is an effort to standardize metrics across the consensus clients. So I, th I think some of that's happening. Um, but again, to the, to the previous question, like, a lot of the metrics will always be implementation specific. In terms of um, roles and you know, in, in team members, who generally looks at which metrics and which graphs? Um, just kind of to get an idea of uh, you know, which metrics and graphs are useful to which team members or depending on like the role or the, the, the type of work that they do. You're asking if, if only certain members contribute to these? No, or? more like the uh, looking at the, the graphs and the browsing the, 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 the metrics themselves. Like, you know, for example, there are lots of metrics, so not everybody looks at everything. So, you know, it's more um, what, you know, what team members look at, look at what kinds of graphs are. Right, so, so for, any of these lar larger feature pull requests, we have the the person who is authoring or kind of owning that that feature. They're responsible for um, making the case that 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 it's correct and then it works as intended. And so th they're responsible for looking at the metrics and building building that case. And then as far as like um, our release process, we have um, a checklist of basic things that we look at. Um, before we before we actually release, we have a testing period. So we cut a cut a beta release. We deploy it to our fleet, um, and we watch it for a few days. And then after a few days, we um, gather, you know, check, check do the checklist and any other kind of ad hoc things that we're 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 noticing then. Okay, so in Web2, there is a standard of how to consume logs, metrics, and traces, and it's done by the Cloud Native uh, Foundation to make the same pipeline that you have here more standard in a way that's consumed by other tools as well. Uh, did you take a look at that? I would recommend that if not. The, the standardization effort is to, ha to build out some kind of baseline of functionality, like you can have one, one Prometheus and Grafana running and then whichever client you want plugged in here, you kind of have some guarantees like, uh, it's not breaking and like it's, 
it's kind of working, so yeah. That's exactly what open telemetry does, so take a look at it. <laughs>